snuggle Karen to the couch. I... <laughs> you were the only person that didn't laugh at me for being afraid of a marmot. When I was nine, a friend and I were playing in the woods. We were far from home, about an hour away. My friend found some baby marmots, probably only a few weeks old. He was so busy playing with them, he didn't notice a boar mother and piglet behind him. The boar thought he was too close to its child, so I ended up goring him into the lung with one of her tusks. The wheezing grew short in breaths. He was gasping for air as his lungs filled with blood, and there was nothing I could do to stop the bleeding. It took me an entire day to carry the body back to his house. I was so weak, I had to take breaks every few minutes. When I arrived at his, at his parents' house, it was completely pitch black out. My hand shook as I laid his body at the door. I was almost as cold as he was. When his mother finally opened the door, I will never forget that scream as long as I live. I never wanted to let anyone down again with my weakness, ever. So I pushed myself to the breaking point as a teenager, getting stronger every week. I should have never left Ukraine. Prager looks like he's about to cry. Thank you. Oh no. Oh god. Oh god. Please, Gregor. Can we please not look at that face? Oh, hey, Karen. I think he's trying to speak. What is it, Gregor? I tell Karen that Gregor has died. He hasn't spoiled yet. Let me show you the rest of him. Karen shuffles over to the basement door, opening the lock with the knife. Why wait until she's in the basement? Take back the knife and end her life. You explain how difficult it is to get blood out of wood. Oh my god. Your laziness is unbelievable. The minute those four entered the cabin, you should have killed all of them. You're getting soft. You nursed a weakened butcher back to health? What if she ends up killing you now? I brought you the key. When she goes downstairs, lock the door behind her with that deadbolt. Then let her rot. Karen, potato, might have made great allies in another life. We need to stop her before it's too late. Walk over to the basement door. Okay, where's Karen? When are you fixing this hole? You can feel her breath coming through the crack in the door. You locked the basement door! What the hell are you doing? Goodbye, Karen. Ah, she slips into the darkness. You climb on the couch to rest, waiting for the basement noises to become silent. I'm sorry, isn't there a dead Gregor on the couch? Did I already move him? Oh, God. Mariah was correct. It's freezing over here. The frigid air swirls visibly in front of you. The basement noises have completely stopped. What do you want to do? Let's look at the bookshelf. There's various books on a wide variety of topics. No time to read them now, though. Um, look under the couch. Lots of cobwebs underneath. Thankfully, no spiders. You notice a child's toy. How did this get under here? It's a small wooden boat. That's weird. No ports anywhere near here. Looks like there's a name engraved on it. Raziel. Maybe Bread would want this? Bread's not around right now. We'll have to hold on to it till the moment's right. Take a closer look at the subjects on the bookshelf. Cooking, herbalism, skinning. Books that are good for surviving in the wilderness. You take another look at the subjects. Carpentry, metalworking, tailoring. Books that are good for crafting in the wilderness. Wasting time reading books? You were just browsing. Sure. Why not read this one? Potato nudges one of the books. The edges of the pages are a little singed. This was saved from a book burning. I wonder why. One may in truth proceed against such a man as against a person who is gravely suspect, but he is not to be condemned in his absence and without a hearing. And yet the suspicion may be very grave, and we cannot refrain from suspecting these people, for their frivolous ass assertions do certainly seem to affect the purity of the faith. For there are three kinds of suspicion, a light suspicion, 
a serious suspicion and a grave suspicion. You take the singed book with you. I'd say your entire life has been a grave suspicion. It's a shame you never went to trial for anything. That would never happen. Carrying around a book would be a burden, so you put it back. The rest of the books are boring. Alright, let's go eat a meal, I guess. You decide to have a quick lunch at the table. Hmm. She escapes! You wake in a cold sweat. Wake up, sleepyhead. Oh, Karen. Hey! I like this Karen. <laughs> you are having a nightmare. Oh, wow. The sheets are completely soaked. Are you wetting the bed? You feel underneath you. Gross. You must have broke a fever because the sweat is everywhere. Don't worry, we can wash them in the basement. Just unlock the door and we'll make a day of it. You're not that slow with laundry. Come with me, I have something to show you. You cautiously get up, following Karen out of the bedroom. Oh, the basement door was already open. I'm hungry. Let's get something from the basement. You feel the cold presence of Karen behind you. Goodbye. Stop! Grab onto the railing! You do so, feeling a slight push on your back. You feel the presence leave. That was a close one. Karen will try everything in her power to kill you. Tread cautiously downstairs. Why are you helping me, Potato? Because I pity what you've become. You work your way down to the bottom of the stairs. Something is approaching. Uh, I don't trust them about that jump scare thing earlier. Oh, God, it takes so unbearably long. down here the entire time. It's so good to see you again. There's plenty of bread down here. Why aren't you saying anything? I'll never forgive you for what you did. You put Anatoly through hell. You desecrated my corpse. You gave them that disgusting hunger. Oh, jeez. All of that is water under the bridge now. Anatoly's down here. Come have some bread with us. They always try things like this. Their anger, concentrated near their grave, leads to tricks and traps. You're not falling for this one. Why aren't you listening to me? There's bread down here, loaves of it. Fine. I won't stop you from finding the others down here. One piece of advice? Beware of Karen. She is ill beyond repair. Gregor will try to talk to you out of reaching the room. Anatoly will try to talk you into leaving the cabin. And Karen will rip the flesh from your bones. We'll talk again. Bye, Mariah! You feel Mariah leaving the staircase. You go deeper into the abyss. Wee! The walls down here, they're dirt and suit. Something is approaching. Very, very, very loudly. Hello? Who is it this time? Is it Gregor? Yep! Hey, man! I'm glad I found you! The rain outside has stopped! Did you hear that knocking? Another trap! Everyone's upstairs and wants to leave! Mariah was worried sick about you! You tell Gregor about speaking with Mariah. Guess I can't lie to you, huh? You just stood there while Karen took my limbs, doing nothing. I WANTED to do something, man! Blame the pro- Blame- Not the protagonist, because God knows this character is not a good person, but- Ah, uh, jeez. Are you frightened by her? Apparently. If you won't come upstairs with me. Please turn on the light when you reach the room. I want to see the look on your face when that light bulb turns on. Can you do that for me? Sure thing. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for letting me lick the bowls, Queen. That was enough to keep him at bay. You were as sweet as a pound cake. I guess my optimism made me a little naive about you. The anger of the whispers. I know your true nature now. We'll meet again soon. 
Beware Karen. God, I don't know how much more I can take of this right now. You feel Gregor leaving the staircase. You descend deeper into the abyss. Your feet finally hit solid ground in the basement. Something doesn't feel look right. You. Nope, I don't think I want to look behind me. You peel around the wall blindly and locate the light switch. Found you. Karen's grown stronger than you as of late. Consuming her friends has imbued her with rage. She's lost in the abyss and nothing but death can end this madness. I hope you prepared for what comes next. You can feel something creeping up in front of you. Hello. Cabbage! Cabbage, what are you- Cabbage, cabbage! It took us forever to move the rubble you put in the mouse holes. Chop it! Come out! Oh, they're all alive! What a coinky dink! Never fear, Onion is here! Like my cousin Cornbread says, I'll rise to the occasion! Sometimes very raspberry! What lie did you tell them, Potato? That you have moved on. <laughs> Will you let us go? Nope. Someday, maybe. Jump it! We, we can't allow Karen to take over the cabin! She's much worse than you, Stinky! Did you see what she did to Gregor? Unhinged! She's a cut above you right now! <laughs> you don't need our help with this, just remember what she's done! Channel that anger! She's just like Potato now, right? I'm still here, Cabbage. <laughs> and as a punishment for earlier, we're locking you in the room again, Potato! No chomp at trial needed! You got company oh. down here, Potato. One of us should hide the key! That's enough! Hmm. No need to twist the knife! <laughs> Good luck, yeah, Chompets! Yeah, yeah. Let's help out! The Chompets get in position behind you, ready for what's next. Let's do a quick save real quick. You feel around the wall blindly and locate the light switch. Found you! Okay. Let's end this! Ah! Oh, oh! We don't even have to fight her anymore, it just... Default kills her. Alright, how many times are we stabbing her this time? Just the one? Oh! This is new! Hey, Karen! How you doing? Um... Oh? Hello. Cabbage. Look, he's trying to speak. Um, <laughs> don't be shy, try again. <laughs> Might take a few more days. Welcome to the chill pits, Turnip. Oh. Hey, thanks for coming by, hanging out. Watching this nightmare. Oh, cute little Mariah. Oh, she's adorable. Okay. I'm gonna go try to not have nightmares tonight. So, uh, bye everybody.